Alrighty guys, good morning. Happy Saturday. Thanks for framing this weather to come out and kind of talk a little about, about scaling and stimulus. So, some of you guys, most of you guys know me. Uh, my name is Vilma Rosario. I'm a CrossFit Level 3 certified trainer. I've been CrossFitting for 10 years, competitive athlete, affiliate owner. And part of what I do is not just educating my clients, but also educating other coaches, right? So how to be a better coach. One of the hard parts about being an affiliate owner is when people first hear that I'm a CrossFit coach, they say, oh man, CrossFit, I heard you get hurt, or that's really hard or intense, or, um, oh, I'm scared to do CrossFit. A lot of that has to, has to do with who's at the top and the way that other people, the way people coach other people. What tends to happen is that someone has a bad experience and tells somebody about it. It's a negativity bias. And so my goal as a coach is to help people's first experience no matter what affiliate they go to, be a positive one. And that means doing outreach things like this, not just for our athletes, but for other coaches. So hopefully with time, we'll get a little bit more involvement with other folks in the community. Um, we've actually had a lot of people reach out and ask about mentorship for level two or level three. Um, so that's gonna be something you might see some faces around here that are unfamiliar who have questions about coaching. So today we're gonna go on pro coach number one, which is based off of scaling. <clears throat> when you guys walk in the door here, the most important thing you have to remember is that this is your journey, okay? So your fitness, this is your lifestyle, your retirement, your ability to continue in a sport that you love for years and years and years, hopefully until, you know, the time comes. When it comes to scaling, I need the biggest issue I think that as an affiliate owner and coach I see on a regular basis is understanding that scaling is not a regression. You're not failing because you're scaling. You're failing when you're not hitting stimulus, all right? So when you guys are not scaling the workout, if you're pushing through an injury, if you're not doing the things that you need to do, you're actually putting yourself behind, not ahead. Okay, I cannot stress that enough. So instead of thinking of scaling as being a regression, it's actually a progression to a future goal, okay? So today we're gonna to talk about kind of three of the, some elements when it comes to scaling. And again, we'll do another one next month. We're gonna to try to keep it short so that you guys aren't like, <sighs> before you start your workout, okay? So our, when it comes to scaling, you have two main objectives. You wanna preserve the stimulus, what a workout should feel like, okay? If you are time capping every single workout, you're doing it wrong, all right? Um, if you're not feeling the intensity of the workout, we're doing it wrong, all right? The way that, person feels should be the same way that Callan feels, it's the same way that Stephanie feels, that Mike feels, no matter, that I feel, no matter what. It's just based off of your individual goals and, and where you currently are at in your, in your fitness. So how do we adjust a workout to preserve the stimulus or what it should feel like, right? The first thing we look at is the time domain. So those time caps, they exist for a reason, right? So if it's taking me 20 minutes to finish Fran, which is 21, 15, nine thrusters and pull-ups, and really the time cap is seven minutes, I totally missed the point of that workout. It's no longer a short, intense workout. It's now turned into a long grinder, and I'm not feeling that stimulus, okay? I missed the point of the workout. So when it comes to scaling, time domain is important. So when we talk about those time caps, don't just ignore us. You should be like, holy shit, that's a 10 minute time cap and I have 30 reps, I need to be moving. Or, oh man, it's a 15 minute time cap but it's just 10 reps, this is gonna be something that I scale a little bit more, okay? So that's what the point of those whiteboard briefings are when we start talking about the time domain. Movement pattern. If the movement is pull-ups, your scaling option is not gonna be air squats, right? We wanna preserve the movement pattern. So when most of you guys started here, you went through an on-ramp program. Those half-hour sessions, it's those progressions. So we talk about the first movement patterns, which are your body weight movements, your pull-up, your push-up, your air squat. When it comes to scaling, we want to preserve that. So let's talk about a box jump. This is one that I was like, well, duh, that was silly. A step-up is not the same as a box jump. It's a totally different movement. It's a single-legged step-up. It's not preserving the stimulus, because guess what? That turns into active rest, so the time domain's now different, right? It's no longer maintaining that intensity, and it's a different movement pattern. You're stepping up with a leg as opposed to a two-footed jump. What would be better? 
jumping over a line on a stack of plates, doing something that requires a two-foot takeoff and a two-foot landing. So when it comes to scaling, thinking about those next level things and preserving that movement pattern. Number three is trying to preserve complexity, okay? So this is a, a good one. The snatch, yesterday we snatched. That is a complex movement, right? So if we can't snatch from the floor, we want to still try to preserve that movement stimulus, right? Movement pattern, time domain, maybe we snatch from the hang so that we're maintaining that complexity. Let's say we just don't have that quite yet. We don't have the shoulder mobility or flexibility to do that. Maybe we do a dumbbell snatch. Okay, well that's not working. So let's try a clean. At least that preserves the complexity of the movement, right? We're still doing an Olympic lift. Okay, that's not working. Let's try med ball clean. Okay, that's not working. Let's switch to a kettlebell swing, right? But see how those movement patterns all kind of have the same themes in place, okay? The other thing we start thinking about as well with movement pattern is what body parts are moving, not just the push-up, but also like, is it a hip-driven movement, leg-driven movement? What plane of direction is the move, is, the, is uh, happening? So is it going forwards? Is it going this way? Because we all know a push press is different than a push-up. It's not the same. So understanding that, and as coaches, B and I, our goal is to help you guys understand that. So if you have questions, ask them, right? The next one we talk about is the elements. So volume, how much overall work are you doing? Pull-ups is a really good one for this. So let's say uh, you have 10 pull-ups around and there's three rounds. So total volume of 30 pull-ups. You might say, oh, I can't do 10 at a time, I'm broken. But I think I can do five and five and that's okay. All right, so maybe pull-ups is your day-to-day. -day. Let's say we have a workout like Cindy, right? And we have five pull-ups, so it's less pull-ups per round, but you're doing 20 minutes worth of pull-ups, push-ups, and air squats. It's probably not a good idea if you can't hang on to sets of five consistently to do Cindy and maintain that stimulus because you're gonna end up falling off, right? You might need to scale to something that you can stay relatively unbroken at least through the first five or six minutes of the workout because your total volume, if you're getting 20 rounds of Cindy, is 100 pull-ups. It's a little bit different than 30. So understanding what the overall workout looks like. Another good example, I did a workout last week that's very similar to a hero workout that we do here that has one power clean around. The power clean is 155 pounds, okay? So in that workout, you might look at it and say, oh, I can do one power clean at 155 for 20 minutes. Yeah, not when you're doing 20 rounds of it, okay? So you might look at it and say, well, I could do one. And this is where, as a coach, I go, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So that's where you start to understand like, hey, okay, I could do one power clean at 155, but I'm gonna be like this crying for like three minutes in between each round, okay? <laughs> um, so volume is important to understand, not just the volume per round, but the overall volume in the workout itself. Load, so this one was a good one. I'm not gonna use you as an example, but we're gonna talk about that workout. So we have folks who are incredibly strong here, it's amazing. That workout that we did with the 50 front squats and 50 bar facing burpees, okay? You can, might be able to clean 250, but that volume on the front squats and the way those burpees hit is totally different. So understanding the load and being able to scale the load, not just based off of your one rep max, but of over your capacity, your ability to do work over time, okay? If you guys are only doing two front squats and then stopping and it's 50 front squats and the time cap is 10 minutes and you're capping, you just miss half the workout, right? And then you feel like crap because you're really sore because you under, or you over, um, you went above and beyond your threshold. You surpassed your threshold. So I've had the, I guess, fortune to be able to attend three Bergeron seminars in my coaching uh, career. He's retiring. I, even though a lot of people are like, oh, like he's old school CrossFit and his athletes aren't doing as well, he's an amazing coach. And when it comes to coaching athletes, on a daily basis, he knows his shit. And for every second that you guys spend above that threshold of work, that's two to four seconds that you're going to pay for it later on. So understanding that concept and being like, okay, I need to, I need to apply that into my workouts is such an important part of what we do here on a regular basis. For you guys to fight through a heavy weight or to grind through ugly reps or to push yourself in a way that doesn't preserve the stimulus and doesn't respect the point of the workout is really just putting you behind in the long run, okay? Range of motion. This is a good one. That's my, probably gonna be my next one. So when you guys are doing this, okay, and you have the ability to do this, you guys are shortchanging 20% of each rep 
Multiply that over 100 reps, you just lost so much ability to build strength, power, coordination, and not only that, but that full range of motion for the joints is good for them as long as we can do them safely. So when we get on to you guys about squatting lower or moving better, it's because you're A, moving inefficiently, B, potentially causing injury, C, really shortchanging yourself in your workout. Okay, for this group, not so much a thing, but we have to talk about it, right? But also when it comes to scaling for range of motion, the snatch. I would much rather you guys be able to go all the way down, all the way up, but if that's not possible, let's just work from the hang. That range of motion is still the same, right? It's better than just not doing that movement at all. So understanding that is also an important part of how to scale a workout. Now, common faults in coaches and athletes, beginners, these are like two years and under, right? You only know what you know. So if you've only ever come to this gym, this is your only experience. And B and I are damn good coaches, but we don't know everything, okay? And so I would encourage you guys, if you're in a different town, if you're visiting somebody, drop into a gym. See what it's like. You might learn something different. They may say something to you in a different way that I can't say it, or B might say it different. We might say the same exact thing, but coming from her, it just sounds better. And it clicks, right? So, or other people. Sometimes you, there are resources within classes. Obviously, let coaches coach, but you guys, I know you guys do barbell together. Like there are things like you helped her yesterday with the snatch. Same thing I was saying, but the way she said it to you made sense, right? So like having that experience and being comfortable, trying to broaden your knowledge, not just as an athlete, but maybe one day as a coach is important. There's tons of free resources on CrossFit.com. B and I geek out about this shit all the time. It's pretty bad. Um, but we love to teach, and we don't get an opportunity to do this kind of stuff on a regular basis just because of the way classes are set up. You guys are here to work out, not to hear me talk, right? So, be open to learning. My intermediate athlete lacks wisdom, okay? They're like, well, I already know. I've been doing this for two to five years, you know? I already know what I'm doing. This is where I'm at. Like, I'm just going to do what I can. Like, this is my workout. I respect that, but... As a coach, I have to encourage you to do better, right? To be open to learning new things because even though I've been coaching for eight years and a CrossFit athlete for 10, I'm still learning shit every day, right? So you have to be coachable. When you come in and we tell you guys something, we know our stuff. Like my staff here is a top tier staff. So when Coach B says, hey, I really think you should do X, Y, Z, if you need clarification, fine, ask your questions. But I know that just know I will have her back every time, she will have my back every time, and it's because it's in the best interest of your general fitness and your long-term goals, okay? But that's important. Ask your questions though, like, that's fine. We're happy to clarify and explain to you why we're asking you to scale things a certain way, but understand that when we're like, hey, it's not worth it, it's not worth it at the end of the day, right? So we're here to help you and be a tool in your fitness, and. In this setting, we are a close community and we're friends, but understand that at the same time, B and I are here to do a job and that's to pro provide you guys a fun, effective, and safe workout and you have to let us do that, okay? So, be coachable. My advanced athletes, I've always done it this way. This works for me, I don't wanna try anything new. Or, what I often hear in my older, in my more seasoned athletes, um, this is what works for me. That's not a bad thing, okay? But I wouldn't limit yourself to only those things. Sometimes it takes maybe taking a step back and thinking less of regression and more of how can I progress? Because maybe in the progression that you've gone, you've hit a wall. Maybe we need to take a step back and go in a different direction, right? And we may say you may need to scale this workout or you might be doing intermediate for a month or hey, like, just work on the fitness that works for you. Stop trying to RX everything, right? That's because we need you to take a step back and maybe head in a different direction. It happens. I've been there, I've done that. Take a step back, okay, this isn't working for me. I need to figure out a different way. Maybe I go back to the basics. Maybe I spend a little bit of time researching, videoing my stuff, sending it to coach, seeing what I need help with. I schedule a personal training session. I need help with something specific. But that's what the advanced athletes and coaches, because we get in our ruts where we just know what we know. I was living here for a long time, and I'm still here a lot, but I try to be better. 
But, uh, you know, having that dialogue and being like, well, how can we do this better? Always pushing forward, always trying to find a better way to do something, but also being really able and willing to try. All right? Now, as for questions, do you guys have any questions about this so far? I was thinking, what about if you have the time for the uh, intermedia athlete? Well, you don't improve enough. So that's a really great <laughs> question. So she's saying she's like an intermediate athlete and she feels stuck, right? So there are these things called waves of adaptation. So when you're a new, we call it newbie game. So your first wave, you're like, hell yeah, everything's great. I PR all the time. That's what gets us hooked. And we're like, all right, we're badasses. Second wave is kind of, it takes longer, right, for you guys to get that adaptation to happen because it's no longer learning new stuff. So I use Caitlin as an example. She PR'd her snatch by double. That doesn't happen for most of us here anymore, right? So she's put the work in, she's hitting those newbie games. That's awesome for her, we're happy, but she's put in the work and now the skill is no longer the limiting factor, right? And then you get to a point where, it's probably where you're at, which is, you might see a game once in a blue moon, right? You might PR once a year. That's okay, that's very normal. So how do we fix that? A couple things we ask from a coach's perspective. How consistent are you? That's a big one, all right? You don't have to PR every day. You don't have to compete every day. It's bullshit. I hate that. You just need to show up. You need to do your best. If you ever see me train, I was crying yesterday. I had a bad day yesterday. I came in and worked out. I didn't do my very best. What I was trying to do wasn't working out, but I showed up and did it anyways, and I did what I could that day. And that's okay. It wasn't my best training day, but I showed up, right? Just show up. So that's step one is consistency. Number two, what's your recovery looking like? How, often, how much are you sleeping? Are you taking rest days, right? So like on a typical week, I train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, off Thursday, train Friday, Saturday, off Sunday. Training five days a week is hard, all right? So listening to your body and being like, oh, you know what, I need a rest day today. Let's put a routine to this. That's important, all right? Are you stretching? Are you doing the behind the scenes work? Number three, once we have the two things that you can control, A, you have to show up, obviously. B, the things you control outside of the gym. C, what can we control within the gym? Are you scaling effectively? And that's the question that we have for you guys. Because if you're coming in and you're not scaling effectively and you aren't hitting the stimulus, you're not pushing yourself in that direction, that might be why. So those would be the first three things I would look at as a coach um, on an athlete that kind of feels a little bit stuck. Now, what most people do is that they say, I'm just gonna do more stuff. And that's not the answer. So more is not better. When you guys are doing more, and you're not doing it right, then you end up creating things you have to fix later, right? So like for you specifically, I think barbell's great because you know your stuff and you know how to do that well enough that I think that's gonna be a benefit to you. But the days where we have it, like a lot of running, I know those don't tend to be popular with my barbell girls. Those are the days that we need. Shots fired, thank you. <laughs> but that's gonna help your fitness because when you think about and I mean that lovingly because that was the same thing. I did barbell for two and a half years. I did CrossFit, so I get it. Um, but when we look at the theoretical hierarchy for CrossFit athletes, right? How it was originally designed was nutrition. So that's something we also also have to talk about, which we'll do a talk about that at some point, right? So nutrition's the base, cardio. And then gymnastics, and then weightlifting, and then sport. Holy shit, everybody's like, we're like way over here out in space, and we're just like, Ew. I wanna win everything all the time. I wanna crush the class every day, right? So you gotta start looking at what's your nutrition like? Are you eating regularly enough? And your cardiovascular fitness, that cardio component, this month's focus is so important in your general fitness. Because guess what? For most of you guys, it wasn't the front squat that got you on, on front squat day. It was the burpees, okay? And so to be an athlete in the sport, 
following this hierarchy is important. But in the last probably five years, they added one more thing to this. Recovery. And if you guys are not prioritizing that recovery, you will pay for it later on. Okay? I mean, taking rest days when you need them, understanding where you are for the day, but also that means some lifestyle stuff too. Alcohol, I mean, I mean, I love to drink, don't get me wrong, but I have tracked my recovery, whether I have one drink or 10 drinks, it's always at least 25% reduction in recovery. Yes, sir? You can do active recovery, but the difference is it's two parts. It's not just your muscles, but it's also your central nervous system. So, like, you know, like, sometimes when you do a heavy clean and then you, like, slap on, like, 50 more pounds and it feels, like, 10 times heavier, but if you would have just done, like, a set of 10, 10 more pounds and then 15 more pounds and built up, it's not too bad? So, same idea. So when you guys are slamming a ton of intensity and a ton of CrossFit on at one time and you're not letting your central nervous system recover, you will, everything will feel hard, right? And so that's where rest and recovery is important. Thursdays are an active recovery day for me. So like uh, I'm still coaching and doing stuff. Sundays I don't do anything. I'm a couch potato. But it's important. Even if you go walk, like that's not the end of the world. But coming in, rowing, stretching, moving at your own pace, like that stuff's important. All right? Um, other questions? No? All right. Well, hopefully this helps you guys better understand like kind of what we're looking for um, as coaches and gives you a little bit of a breakdown as to where we're coming from. Um, if there's coaches watching this, there well, and you guys too. So there's a video and an article which I sent both to you. I'm gonna post them on my Patreon as well um, about like more in-depth reading and the more nitty-gritty sciencey parts of this stuff. And I have my notes as well that I'll share uh, from when I read this article when I was studying for my level three. But this stuff is important. Like CrossFit is not just um, show up and work out. Although it can start that way. There's a lot more to it, right? So just show up will help you work out, but understanding why we're doing things the way we're doing them is also important as well. All right, um, that was one more thing. I was talking about the alcohol. So alcohol is a big one, right? Um, the other one is sleep. If you guys aren't sleeping, your body's not gonna be able to regenerate. So if you have questions about that, there are supplements that some of us take um, that's been really helpful. I had somebody reach out and I gave them some samples of what I had and that helped them. And I found out about that from someone who helped me. Um, but like sleep, stress management, joy or hobby, holy crap, that's a big one. A lot of you guys, all you do is work and work out. And sometimes your joy, like CrossFit, turns into your work, which we were talking about yesterday, um, or it's no longer fun. So you have to find ways to keep things fun. So joy hobby, um, sleep, nutrition, managing your stress levels, spending time outside. Oh my gosh. So, so many of us work in buildings, like just taking 30 minutes outside three times a week is gonna change your life. No technology. You said 30 minutes? Yeah, 30, uh, just being outside. Yeah, with no technology, no agenda, just hanging out. That's when I do my little gardening. A little squirrel over there. but. Like that makes a huge difference. And um, if you guys have questions, Coach B and I are here for you. So we're, yes ma'am. Um, would, would, attend, would attending like um, something that hurts us, like um, for example, her with the right yeah. her hand, or like my knee is reasonable, like yeah. um, putting attention to it right away if you yes. fall on the recovery? Yes, so like when you guys have an injury or like a, a issue, not ignoring that. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you how important that is. I've been doing this a long time and I've worked through a lot of injuries with a lot of people. And guess what? It's gonna keep happening, it's gonna get worse, and it's gonna to get to a point where it makes CrossFit not fun anymore, right? Yeah. So, like we work around it, like how we scaled the workout for you the other day. As a coach, that's what we do when you were pain free, right? Yeah. So you can still get a great workout that's effective and fun. Yeah, you're not gonna RX a workout. I don't give a shit. Like RX is cool, but guess what? At the end of the day, that shit's getting erased. 
on the whiteboard, all right? What's more important to me as a coach is to make sure that you're getting what you need. So you got a great workout that was effective and it's gonna actually help you with healing up that knee of yours. How's it feeling today? Okay. Yeah, but with the bands it was okay. Yeah. You work so, and it's hard, but taking the time to know that it's only temporary. Because I get it. I've been dealing with this elbow thing forever, and the hip thing's finally better. But like we all go through our injuries too. We work around them. It's not a reason to stop doing what you do. Just work around it. I'm sure there's another area that you can work on that you want to improve your fitness too. Some of you can't squat as heavy, or we do the banded squats, or we do a box squat, we limit the range of motion, that find something that's appropriate for you, so you still have the stimulus. But, we also work on, all right, well, you can't squat super heavy, so you'll get through your squats, and then we're gonna have you sit on the bike and do intervals, right? Do not ignore injuries. That's probably one of the worst things you can do. It will stop you at some point in time. I've worked with enough people for a long, 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 long time to tell you you don't want to do it. And as an athlete, like, again, I don't really talk about what I do on a personal level outside of CrossFit, but like, as an athlete who's been competing for a long time, and like, I know my shit. I'm not the, I'm not gonna be the, I'm humble about it, but I know my shit. Do not do it. You will end up paying for it later on. Like, big time. And so, if you want to compete, if you want to, even if you just want to do this for a long time, you have to address that stuff. So this elbow, I've been to the PT probably 10 times, gotten probably 10 massages. I went and saw the doctor the other day and it's finally feeling better. I haven't done a pull-up in two weeks. Two weeks, sucks. I love pull-ups. I did a muscle-up yesterday. That was my first muscle-up since my match. But, you know, it takes time. I just worked around it. My leg's feeling better, so I'm sweating heavy again. So you just work around it. Maybe you work on your pull-ups. And then guess what? That gives you me a break and you get a goal that you're working on, right? I tore my hamstring probably eight years ago, eight, nine years ago. Black from the bottom of my knee to here. It's part of the reason why this hip's messed up. It, I tore my hamstring. Uh, I don't think I said that part. It's okay. I know it's hard to hear. That's why I put the mic on. But, uh, but yeah, like... Oh. Yeah, my hips or my leg is all messed up, but it's better now, but I have to get work on it. So don't ignore massage. We have a physical therapist on board. If she's ever done work on you, she's an angel. She fixes me every week, right? Um, but you gotta put that back end stuff, that's all recovery. Because if you don't come in ready to go, it's hard to do the rest of it, right? Any other questions for me? You guys can take me as an example. I mean, I was gonna do that to you, yeah. but, but I will give you a gold right. star because Mateo was cat capping all the time and he's like, coach, I'm gonna feel beat up, blah, blah, blah. And so he's made, we were like, just scale the workouts. And he started scaling the workouts and how do you feel? I feel better, like uh, Thursday, I think it was like, I know I can squat like
donation bin. It's not required, but it is helpful. All those proceeds go to A, K, Mabel's B, because that came out of my pocket, and then B, also towards the Gridley Fund. So I want to help you guys um, also learn, but I also have to learn too. So thank you guys, and thank you, Tori, for coming. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe I can sweet talking to doing CrossFit today. It's not too bad. <laughs> Yeah, it teaches you how to